Despite its adherence to American exceptionalism, the United States can't really claim with any confidence that it is the greatest nation on Earth anymore. We Americans are not first in healthcare, upward mobility, life expectancy, nor education. We can't even claim to be the fattest nation on Earth anymore. Thanks, Mexico. The one enduring area of good old American excellence is our ability to wage war. The United States has the most well-armed military on Earth, and when it comes to creating a video game simulating that military might, it just so happens that the best people to do that are a bunch of progressive, hippie, socialist Swedes. For just over a decade now, DICE has been enabling gamers everywhere to jump into tanks, planes, and helicopters and wage 64-player battles. And their latest effort aims to be a greatest hits compilation of beloved features from previous games, as well as adding a few new features of its own. Ever since the introduction of the Bad Company spin-off franchise, Battlefield has dabbled in the arena of single-player campaigns. And Battlefield 4 continues to dabble by putting into the boots of Sergeant Wrecker, a member of a special ops squad called Tombstone. Despite what their name might imply, these guys are not delivering shitty frozen pizzas to third world countries. Their initial mission is to gather intel in Azerbaijan, a local favorite of modern shooters, concerning Russian involvement in a recent calamity in China. An influential progressive political candidate named Zhang Ji has been assassinated, and Admiral Chang is pinning the assassination on the US, generating the outrage necessary for a coup. The intel indicates that Chang will have the backing of Russia, creating a bit of a geopolitical nightmare for the US. On a positive note, DICE has made a few strides forward when it comes to creating a single-player narrative. The members of your squad will have idle conversations that make them seem a bit more human. You will be going home tomorrow in one piece. In bed. In bed. That doesn't work. That doesn't work, Irish. You gotta, no. You said it's a fuck, it's my fortune. I can say what the fuck I want to say. I can have to say what I wanted to say, Pac. It would never say that. A fortune cookie would never say that. How do you know? Did you make fortune And one sequence aboard an aircraft carrier that requires no combat allows the player to assess the fallout of a previous mission. Showing is better than telling when it comes to an interactive narrative. The positives in here in terms of the narrative, however. The game's sparse seven missions don't allow characters and events to develop naturally. In particular, one of your squad mates, Irish, has misgivings about working with a Chinese agent, but comes to trust her after a single conversation resolving a conflict that spans several missions in minutes. Also confounding is the fact that your silent character becomes the squad leader. While DICE is attempting to immerse players with this approach, it's rather dumbfounded to see characters talk at you and then act without your input, making this the worst use of a silent protagonist since Gordon Freeman introduced us to the concept. As far as playing the campaign is concerned, it's best summarized as tech porn. The first two missions are engaging as a result of the rendering might of Frostbite 3, stumbling into the room of a dilapidated building in Baku, Azerbaijan, with a small tree growing out of the center of the room and illuminated by rays of sunlight like some sort of post-apocalyptic oasis is a strongly compelling visual display. Seeing massive high-rises under construction with multi-story tarps blowing in the wind as dust and debris swirl in front of your character provides an epic sense of scale, even if the boundaries of the mission are unremarkable. Every frame is littered with particle effects, god rays, lens flares, cloth simulations, copious shallow pools reflecting neon lights, and heavily tessellated geometry. With the release of Crisis 3 and Metro Last Light earlier this year, this would not be very impressive on its own, but the ability to destroy much of the environment leaves quite the impression. Finding yourself on the top floor of a skyscraper, blowing apart pillars, bottles of liquor, and watching lantern light fixtures crumble when shot is chaotic enough, but blowing out windows causes wind to race through, picking up paper, and leaving the impression of being trapped in a really dynamic and very real environment. The jig is up after that, however, and the campaign becomes a monotonous journey through waves of soldiers. The amount of kami calling President Battlefield 4 would make Joe McCarthy stand up from his grave, bellowing the national anthem, and stuff his face with apple pie. But it does little to excite gamers who have become accustomed to this kind of game design. It doesn't help that the soldiers you face seem to have lived off a diet of lead paint chips and industrial waste, as they frequently find themselves aiming away from the action and generally behaving in a foolish manner. They dutifully take their place behind cover and throw large volleys of grenades while poking their heads out every now and then. Occasionally, scripted sequences will not trigger smoothly, creating awkward moments that pull you out of the action. The occasional vehicle sequences and an unexpected but brief stealth section add a small amount of variety to the proceedings, but do little if anything to redeem its shortcomings. It should be noted that several weapons are unlockable only through completing the campaign. Several dog tags for your online avatar are also unlockable through the campaign. Fortunately, DICE has done what DICE does best, and that's delivering awesome large-scale multiplayer battles. The biggest addition to this installment is what DICE has dubbed Levolution. Essentially, maps feature major elements that are destructible and have an impact on the way the map is played. Think of it like Twisted Metal 2's Paris Arena, where blowing up the Eiffel Tower has allowed players to access the rooftops of the city. 
The degree to which you'll notice a change in the maps is really dependent on what mode you're playing, but they can be generally best appreciated in the game's conquest mode. Often, easy to defend capture points can be destroyed, changing the viability of more direct attack strategies. For example, a guard tower with only a single entrance contains a capture point in the smaller close quarters focus map Operation Locker. This guard tower can be blown up and a sub-level exposed which makes the point much easier to capture. In Flood Zone, a levee can be destroyed which floods the map making travel on foot slow and tedious. Boats become a necessity and the narrow makeshift bridges become pinch points for those darting from building to building. Weather is also dynamic, and in some maps, rough seas can make naval battles tricky, and blizzards can reduce visibility. In addition, there are smaller ways to interact with elements of the game's 10 maps. Rail car doors can be closed on one map, allowing you to ambush unsuspecting foes. Barriers can be raised to block vehicle access across bridges and must be disabled by soldiers on foot. Prison gates can be closed to slow down opposing forces as well. While the degree to which these things can have a direct impact on the fight varies from map to map, their inclusion is largely successful and allows Battlefield 4 to greatly depart from the more static map designs of its peers. Maps are also greatly varied, ranging from smaller close quarters arenas like Operation Locker to wide open vehicle based skirmishes found in Goldman Railway. Commander mode also returns from Battlefield 2. Each team can have a commander that surveys the battlefield, calls in artillery strikes, and generally provides support and intel for those on the ground. A good commander can make all the difference in a match. As a prerequisite for taking the role of commander, players must reach level 10 before they can guide their team to victory. Progression has also been shuffled around. New guns are unlocked by using guns of the same type instead of using the class that is associated with a given weapon type. Getting kills with a DMR will unlock more DMRs regardless of what class you're playing. Sniping has also been tweaked with the inclusion of rangefinders and zeroing your scope. Essentially, it takes some of the guesswork out of aiming, though it's too slow to use on the fly, keeping snipers in check. Battle packs are also a new part of the progression system, and are earned by reaching certain milestones. Once opened, battle packs give players several unlocks such as camouflage, dog tags, and weapon attachments. Many weapon attachments are available only through battle packs. Thankfully, the most critical upgrades to most weapons are unlocked through kills rather than chance. A training island will help newcomers learn the art of piloting jets and choppers, as well as experiment with vehicles. This hasn't stopped reckless morons from jumping at aircraft only to crash them two seconds later while the enemy dominates the airspace, however. These new features and tweaks make this the best Battlefield multiplayer yet, but it comes with one major caveat. It's only great when it works. The launch for Battlefield 4 has been rather rocky. Persistent crashes have been reported, and frequent server disconnects have severely retarded character progression, since rounds must be completed to retain experience and upgrades. Sound bugs also make the game frustrating, since sound design has been one of Battlefield's most excellent elements. When silent, certain weapons will kill sound for everyone on the server. Sound will cut in and out while driving tanks as well. This will likely be fixed in the near future, but it's been rather frustrating for early adopters and a poor precedent to set when EA is marketing future DLC so aggressively. Console players have not been immune from frustration either, with certain maps causing the game to crash. Battlefield 4 is like buying a new Ferrari and driving 10 miles down the road only to realize it's leaking oil. This makes rendering a final verdict on Battlefield 4 a bit tricky. The single player is a throwaway experience once you've taken in the stunning visual presentation, and the excellent multiplayer package is in need of some attention. The multiplayer issues are fixable, however, and some of the issues in this review will likely be addressed once this review is up. The return of Commander Mode is long overdue, and a welcome addition to this next generation Battlefield experience. Increased destruction also makes a much welcome return. Levolution is largely successful, and smaller interactive map elements go a long way toward bringing the battlefield to life, and can encourage a bit of strategy in some situations. The sound design is as strong as ever, with thunderous echoes coming from large caliber rifles and deafening explosions. Ultimately, Battlefield is an unrivaled multiplayer shooter, offering a sense of scale and chaos that is staggering. Let's just hope DICE and EA work out the bugs sooner rather than later. Clear! Freeze! 